All right, Shalom Rastafari. Now this is going to be on this particular vid right here. We want to re-examine the creeping coup against his majesty. We spoke about the Kabbalistic uh, ritual murder of the king and connecting that to this whole New World Order so-called conspiracy. And so now we're going to look at this right here. All right, we're going to look at the student protest part of it. Right? What was really behind this? Because this is something that has, um, I know it has really um, perplexed some of us, and even Ethiopians, like this statement right here, Bagoresu um, which would be basically understandable as biting the hand that feeds you. You know, biting the hand that gives you uh, a gorsha. What's a gorsha? How do you say gorsha? Gorsha is like um, is like you are giving someone a a a like uh, like a double portion. I like to call it double portion because I like to keep it scriptural and biblical, right? And that led to this right here. What we see right here with the fragmentation and taking the lion of Judah. Right, seeking to take the line of Judah right out of the equation. Right, Moa and Bessa is the M Negeda Yehuda, where he took the line of the tribe of Judah off of the flag. Now, I didn't I didn't open this window. I opened a couple of windows here. Right, um, there's some other stills that will help us to uh, tell the story. Right, to tell the story, and that led to this. So now after the student protests and the derg and the military, I mean, it was, remember what they call it? They call it the creeping coup. Now, let's remember, okay, here's where we go right here, right? This is, this is your golden calf, right? This is a golden calf, right? Communism and socialism. Now, what's really, you know, what was really behind um, communism and uh, or socialism? Now, Let's remember that communism doesn't tolerate God. Communism basically says there's no God. Socialism, on the other hand, is willing to go along with the idea of God if the God or the priest or whatever of that society basically says what the Pharisees said and the Jews of the first century. We have no king but Caesar. So whoever is that, Ms. Connor, whoever is that Caesar... King. Now, this is Time Magazine. There's another very interesting magazine as well. And um, let us open it right here. All right. Let's open one more window right here. And let us look up um, from Time Magazine. Uh, let's see. Let's write Time. I think it's. Okay, here we go. Time Magazine. All right. Time. Right. Uh, magazine. Mag. And it's the issue they had where it says God is dead. So we want we wanted to actually find out this particular issue right here. And this particular issue was um, the cover of Is God Dead? Now let's look at the date. It's from April eighth, right here. April eighth. Let's um magui out this. Let's make it larger, right? You see? April eighth, right? April 8, 1966. Is God dead? April 8, 1966. So when they say to I and I, they say, Rasta, your God is dead. You understand? When they say to Rasta Ferri, let's understand that. And look down here. Uh, time, um, time Magazine is God dead. Uh, theology is the uh, God is dead movement. Remember, this is 1966, right? The cover, all black with the words, Is God Dead? In what? In large red, uh, in large red text, right? Is God Dead? Time Magazine, right? So let's, let's recognize 1966. Now, we know a lot much more since, you know, like with all the internet and information. So... We know a lot much more than some of the folks knew then. Okay, some of the folks knew some of these bugs on the computer. Okay, here, here, here we go right here. Here's the, 
here's some of the covers, right? Is God dead, right? Which which one is the scare tactic? Somebody calls it the scare tactic block. Is God dead? Right? So so let, let us recognize the connection between these two um these two events. All right, what took place in Ethiopia, right? That um uh, Solomonic Judaic um, polity. You know, there's your, there's your throne of David, right, in Ethiopia. There's Solomon, the Queen of Sheba. There's the King of Kings, Kedamawi, Haile Selassie, whom the Rastafari referred to as Ja Rastafari. And, and, and Christ, in his kingly character, remember, the prophecy concerning Christ was that um, there will be two advents, right? And Christ spoke of the Father and the Son, right? The Father and the Son. So we see the Son in the person of our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, right? That he never sat on the throne of David. So that was to be fulfilled in the future, right? And he spoke of the Father, the Father being great and the Father being witness. And then there's an interesting speech of, um, well, actually not a speech, it's an interview all of his imperial majesty. All right, let that let that do that. We'll come forward to that. There's a there's a speech of his imperial majesty or oh, actually said speech, but once again there's an interview with Oriana Falachi. Most of us know this because Oriana Falachi she keeps asking his imperial majesty about what will happen, you understand to Ethiopia and what will happen, right? What will happen when you die? Okay, they want to hold on that page. Let us let us go right here. What will happen when you die, Your Majesty? What will happen when you die? So, what we're seeing being fulfilled right here, right, is the mystery, the mystery of God in Christ, in the person of His imperial majesty. This is why this whole point about um, is, is, is His Majesty Jesus. Rastafari doesn't say that His Majesty is. Jesus. That's the person of the Son. You understand? We say that he is Christ in his kingly character. But now, in this particular, the computer a little slow right here. They probably hear us. You understand? You see? Okay, it frees up. There we go. Right? And now, let's go right here. So we have uh, Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 12. Right? Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 12, right? The Father and the Son. Now notice this is all fulfilling biblical prophecy. The Bible prophecy is being fulfilled and, and His Imperial Majesty said none of these things such as we say concerning Him being Christ because He did not have to. You see that would have proven that He is a, a false, like these false Christ, these false um, prophets going on. You know, false prophets with white Jesus, right? But here in Zephaniah chapter 2, verse um, 12, it says, Ye Ethiopians also, ye shall be slain by my sword. Now, what's the sword of of God, of Yahweh? Baruchu, blessed be he. The sword of God is the word of God. So we need to look into the word of God, firstly and foremostly. Let's see if we can get back to or forward to this window here. There's a couple other stills that we have here as well. And in light of some of the recent, right, in light of some of the recent developments in Ethiopia against uh, church and state, um, no doubt you might recall this still right here as well, right, this still right here where we spoke about the, all right, we spoke about the covert war against, against his imperial majesty, Haile Selassie I, the king of kings, and the plot to take the Ark of the Covenant. Now, I don't know if this machine, if, if you're going to be seeing this on the screen here, we're looking at it, it is actually um, spilled on the Zephaniah 2 and 12, right? So what we're going to do, let's pause this for a pause. We'll call this the, the Is God Dead, this, like the prequel, Is God Dead? 
Rasta, your God is dead, question mark. Let's, 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 let's sum it up like that, all right? So stay tuned, all right? So we're coming up with the part two and continuing this particular reasoning. Shalom, Ras Teferi.